How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews back with a little bit of a, uh, yeah, Netherlands jams here in the form of De Moosterlietel. Yeah, this be their Octane Overlord, a Russian Imperial Stout with smoked and peated malt. Okay, uh, yeah, so water, malted barley, hops, and yeast are the ingredients. Contains gluten coming in at 12%. Uh, let yourself be conquered by the Overlord. Achmar the Netherlands. Uh, so yeah, this comes courtesy of my boy Thomas Opent. He, um, yeah, he sent off a box of beers from overseas, Netherlands specifically. This be one of them. And yeah, we'll see what's what. There's a Best Buy date on this, but it was actually in the top, like literally over the actual. What do they call that? The the pull tab, the spout. Uh, so I can't read it now. You can see it says Best Buy, but now it's obscured. Um, Lay-wise, it looks very much like um, Human had a baby with, I don't know, a video game. I don't know. Does it make any sense? But, yeah. Mad Max. It's like a He-Man character with a gasoline thing. I don't know. Anyway, it's okay. Uh, Beer-wise, that looks all the part of a big, rich Russian Imperial Stout. It has this kind of big, dense thickness to it very much more oil when I poured it index finger what I like my coffee to look like color wise definitely looks the big the part of a big burly imperial stout let's get a nose yeah I mean there's definitely a bittering component here I believe it's heavily in roasted malt but there's also a big hop um, bitterness to this too not huge but it's definitely big enough to stand up to a beer of this heft because there's this nice, rich kind of semi-sweet kind of chocolate thing going on. Maybe a touch of a little bit of cherry vibes. I get them from Russian Imperial Stouts from time to time. Done and done. It's not all that nuanced or delicate of a beer, obviously, being a 12% Russian Imperial Stout. But it's just kind of forward, bittering, sweet chocolate. A little bit of cherry. Let's dive in. Cheers. Holy shit, that's sweet. Good God. Wow. That's sweet. Wait. So I had the other beer from these guys. I believe it was a 9% stout. And I believe that was super sweet. And I couldn't believe how sweet it was at 9%. They must be doing something extra here. Wow. That's so sweet. Super ridiculous sweet. Very aggressive. There's a decent amount of bittering to this. Actually, there's a pretty aggressive bittering to it, but it's so bonkers sweet on the other end of things, it doesn't register that big. Wow, that's sweet. That's probably one of the sweeter beers I've had in quite some time. And I'm going to say, it's probably got a huge amount of hops in it. It's probably got a big, gigantic IBU. Not that that... Is it uh, a steady indicator of how bittering a beer is going to be? But it's probably up there as far as bittering goes. But man, it's just so sweet to the point where it's almost impossible to kind of get to the base of the beer. I mean, there's a bittering from the roasted malt the hops that come off very, very much like a, almost like a blackstrap molasses kind of thing. On the other side of things, it's just this uber over the top. Super sweetened. Almost like you're drinking straight Hershey's chocolate syrup sweet. That's how sweet this goddamn beer is. Oh, man. I don't know if I can drink any more of it. It's just that big. Yeah, whatever the best buy date is, is on this, you'll want to give this about 15 to 20 years to round out a little bit, I think. <laughs> Hopefully that sweetness kind of rounds out. And uh, But, man, good God. That is crazy. That is crazy. See, and I got that uh, smoked and peated malt, and I can understand where someone would get something like that off this beer, but it really could just comes off as plain bittering for me because any kind of nuance to that to that bittering, that peatiness or smokiness is really just dominated, totally crushed by the uh, sweetness on this thing. I don't even know what to tell you. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this beer. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It is ridiculously sweet. That's all I can give you. Because it's just like, no matter what you do, well, you take a sip of it, even though I get little blips and bla drips and drabs of, of um, bits and pieces of, of more to this beer, it is really just sweet on sweet on sweet. So, yeah, not sure what else to say. Let's talk about it. This is a bit of the, one of the better Russian Imperial Stouts I've had as late. No, uh, way too sweet. Just so one-sided. It's not even funny. Value and availability, 
let me know, Netherlands people, and leave you with if you like what we like this beer, if you like really, 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 really sweet beers, you might find this too sweet. But you might dig it because that's how much you need to love sweet beers to like this beer. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, there you go. Another review in the books. Thank you very much, Thomas, for sending this off. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out through the social media stuff. Beer Massif if you want to check me out through the whole podcasting thing. Go check out Thomas and um, Thomas Open and the Dutch Beer Collective doing their thing on the YouTube. Just type in the old Thomas Open into the old search bar. And hopefully, you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully, you're enjoying a beer not as sweet as this one. Hopefully, see you next time. Cheers.